Hi, Mana family. Getting angry can be like jumping into a powerful sports car, gunning the engine, taking off at high speed, and then at 100 miles an hour, discovering that the brakes don't work. King Solomon writes in, in Proverbs 14.29, He who is slow to anger has great understanding, but he who is quick-tempered exalts folly. And in 1632, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who captures a city. Now notice that Proverbs doesn't condemn all anger. It commends the control of anger. Anger is a God-given emotion that can be used for good or evil. If we get angry over injustice or sin, we are agreeing with God, who is also angry over sin. Now, however, most of our human anger is a lot more self-centered than that. Someone has done us wrong, and we're going to fix it ourselves on our terms. A lady once come up, came up to Billy Sunday, the great evangelist, and tried to rationalize her angry outbursts. There's nothing wrong with losing my temper, she said. I just blow up, and it's all over. So does a shotgun, replied Sunday, and look at the damage it leaves behind. Slow to anger literally means long-fused or long-tempered. It denotes someone who's patient when wrong, someone who does not retaliate when mistreated. God, who has sinned against every day, describes himself as being slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. We're called to act as God acts and not retaliate when wrong. Solomon says it's better to control your anger than to be able to capture a city with military might. One of the problems with anger is that anger can breed more anger, and things can escalate out of control very quickly. In the spring of 1894, the Baltimore Orioles came to Boston Red Sox to play a routine baseball game, but it turned out to be anything but routine. The Orioles' John McGraw got into a fight with the Boston third baseman, and within minutes, both teams had joined in the brawl on the field. The fight spread to the grandstands, and among the fans, the conflict went from bad to worse. Someone actually set fire to the stands, and the entire ballpark burned to the ground. Even worse, the fire spread to 107 other Boston buildings and burned them as well, all as a result of a fight between one player and another player. Anger is like a small fire that turns into and grows into an out-of-control wildfire and burns everything down in this path. We, of course, have a lot of wildfires in the state of California. The solution for wildfires is very simple. Don't light the fire in the first place. King Solomon writes in Psalm, I mean in Proverbs 15.1, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. A hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but the slow to anger pacifies contention. So gentleness is water on an emotional fire that cools it off and puts it out, while harsh words dump gasoline on the fire so that it explodes. A biblical example of someone who didn't listen to that was Rehoboam. Rehoboam was Solomon's oldest son, and he was heir to the throne, and he failed to heed his father's advice. After Solomon's death, the ten northern tribes came to Rehoboam and asked him to lighten their heavy tax load and forced labor burdens, and Solomon's older advisors advised Rehoboam to listen to their request, speak gently to them, and then they would be willing to serve him and let him be king. Unfortunately, Rehoboam listened to his younger advisors, his peer group, and they advised him to harshly respond to the ten tribes and tell them that they would increase their taxes and, and even give them more forced labor. And as a result, tempers flared, and the kingdom literally broke into two. The ten tribes from the north broke away from the two tribes in the south, and a civil war was only very narrowly averted because of harsh words instead of gentle words. Harsh words divided an ancient kingdom, and today harsh words are dividing marriages and families and churches and businesses and even nations. What we need to do is ask God to give us a longer fuse 
And then when we respond, respond with gentleness and love and acceptance, you would be amazed at how the temperature in that fire goes down. Remember, God designed us to do life together together.